I don't think but I hit it that well. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't hit it that well. But if I hit it, if I hit it well with control, I feel like I'm always going to get a shot. And you were using the uh, end rail uh, for your bridging. Uh, do you use it regularly when you well break a ten ball? Or I feel like it's a little bit more solid because mm -hmm. the rail, you know, the table's not going anywhere. So if the cues land on the table, at least the bottom part of it can never move. Uh, yeah, I want consistency, you know, in the break. I want to be able to break and get this exact same shot every time. I don't want to leave anything up to luck. Uh, whereas, like, Frank, or Ruiz Sanchez, he um, he broke really hard and he broke well and, and made balls, but he was le leaving his destiny up to luck if he gets a shot or not. He doesn't really know which pocket he's going to shoot the no, one in. He breaks he the top yeah, he gets yeah. a big curve Because he on hits the it so ball. hard, he's almost playing the lottery every time, where... I want to know for sure I have that exact shot in the corner. Mm. You know, where I feel like... Yeah, that's, I, that's, once a, once that's a nice approach, right? Yeah, once I get it down, I, c I feel like I run eight racks in a row. No, so, But that's the way I've always played pool. I've always yeah. tried to play nine ball like that in, uh, in all the games. So, But didn't work out this time. Maybe next time. Meanwhile, Mika's won the lack. Let's see if he scratches again. Hopefully not. And let's see if the wrecking template uh, works good enough, because uh, yesterday uh, there was a, a slight issue with uh, one of them. We had to replace it. Just because the 10-ball was running uh, straight uh, towards the corner pocket. He's going to try and break with backspin, he told me yesterday. So backspin? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that, he's drawing yeah. the ball. Because he, whenever he did the, the Francisco style break, you know, pop the wide ball with yeah. top spin, he scratched into the right Well, you center. see now, uh, actually, he hit the wreck nicely. Like, yeah. he hit the one uh, yeah. full in the face and yeah. he just m was able to control the cue ball. Yeah, he told me he was going to go for this one more in mm. the rest of the tournament, so it seems to be working. Yeah, he drew the cue ball right to the middle diamond on the yeah. back rail where he broke Yeah, of off. course, he, he couldn't uh, let it unnoticed that uh, yesterday his break uh, kind of let him down. Oh, yeah. Mm did. Luckily for him he was playing against a Bulgarian that was equally a little bit nervous because this was also his first match so mm. they were both struggling a little bit so so maybe the break is not going to be the losing factor anyway for uh, Mika if he keeps doing this But a tough positional shot on the two of confidence. Yeah, he moved the cue ball around nicely there. Yeah, three cushions. Well, speaking about moving the cue ball around, uh, we were very pleased to see a very nice <coughs> draw shot uh, from you there. Like, uh, was uh, almost uh, as good as uh, your famous shot oh on, yeah. the on, the on the two ball, yeah. So yeah it was so, so smooth and there was so much cue ball action there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, then I I, I shot the 10. I was... I was that was, I a disa I that was a disastrous shot after that. I like know, the cue... It, it, I got a bad reaction. The ball skidded like a chalk oh really mark yeah. between... Chalk mark hit mm, between that's the... A, that's unfortunate. And I don't think I cued it that well anyway, but I think if it wouldn't have skidded, maybe I would have made it. It was weird. Weird reaction. I, I got lucky I left it tough, so... I can't tell you how many miscues I've had trying to replicate the shot from YouTube that you did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so many. I polished the balls, vacuum cleaned the table after uh -huh. it was only like a couple of days old. I didn't get anywhere near it. Yeah. I suck. It's <laughs> a tough shot. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. Well, Mika fell a little straight on that one, I think. Mm, it almost did straight. And he's not happy with that. Nah. Top spin, left hand side, should be okay. Couple of rails. Well, the position for the sen seven ball, he's going to need to get. He's going to need to get in a good position here. That was a lot of power there. Nice That's shot. Great. Well, he had to use. Confidence. He had to shoot his previous shot uh, with a bridge, and uh, pool players uh, sometimes uh, well, they tend to really suck playing uh, with uh, with a mechanical bridge as opposed to snooker players. That's I think uh, you, with yeah. your uh, snooker experience now, you are m must uh, get uh, much more skilled with this yeah. piece of equipment. I felt a little bit better. The one shot I missed with the bridge. I c I couldn't really lay the bridge down where I could. I like to hold on to the bridge when I. Sh when I shoot with yeah, my to left make, to, make to, to make some pressure on it, yeah. Yeah, to where I know it's not going to move when I shoot. 
Great, and, uh, great little out here from uh, Imonen. That was almost picture perfect. Cool. Seems like he also just before the match started, he he let Ralph play a few extra shots on the table. I I think he was just trying to compose himself and not really care about getting extra shots on the table. He's just yeah. he knows that with a player like Ralph, he has to be a little bit more zen. Oh. I think because yesterday he was fired up in a bad way. So he's trying to probably call me. Well, I oh. think Mika's one of the best power players in the game. I Absolutely. Think he's got, uh, you know, like on a if we're playing on a real slow table, I've played him on some some slow, hard, tough tables, and he plays really well. He's he's, under he's those so conditions. accurate. He's so accurate when he has to shoot him hard. Well, yeah. I've seen him uh, once on a live uh, cam uh, from Amsterdam Billers uh, from New York, and yeah. he was just practicing, and he was doing some crazy stuff like going three rails and four rails on power shots around, and he was like uh, splitting the pocket all, all the way and uh, mm. with yeah. the various kinds of spins. So yes, Corey is uh, yeah. mm, spot on here with um, Mika being one of the most like accurate yeah. power strokers here. He's definitely not afraid to use a couple of cushions with some inside English and stuff like that. He's yeah, very good at that. And again, good square hit, oh and you see that. That was nice. a ball in his side. And nice. yeah, probably was hoping uh, to keep the one ball uh, closer to the end rail. Yeah, or a nice cut, yeah. He hit, it, he hit it pretty hard, and the one actually went to the back, back rail and then back up a little bit. It's a lot like how Shane, bra Shane Van Boning breaks. But well, uh, Ralph kept the cue ball on the table. The cue ball stayed very level. He actually, tried actually, soft breaking actually what uh, what Daniel mentioned yesterday about this very table that uh, uh, due to uh, it not being involved uh, as much uh, in uh, into tournament play as uh, other tables, uh, the speed of this table, the roll uh, is a little bit uh, higher. The table plays quicker. Yeah. So maybe you just uh, have to take some time to adjust. And uh, it was uh, really Mika yesterday who was a little bit struggling with yeah. the table speed. Oh yeah. Perfect safety here from Ralph. But yeah, actually, uh, Ralph was breaking softer yesterday. So. Well, this is a tough kick shot. I, I, I think he'll probably go two rails into the into the one. And uh, could he make a resave? You think if he gets the right contact? I think if he can catch underneath yeah. the one and kind of bank the one towards the side where he's looking right now. Yeah. You know, if he, he gets the bottom rail and hits the one pretty full, maybe he can leave the cue ball behind the two. Yeah. And if he hits the top of the one, the cue ball might slide off the one and go up towards the nine. Yeah. And then maybe the cue ball, maybe the one will hit the, hit the two and then he can yeah. leave it behind the four. So there's a few th few good things that could happen there. Ah, push out. No, he can't, obviously. It was a safety shot. My bad. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think Ralph Suke didn't call push there. He just played safe, right? Oh yeah, he played safe. Yeah. Now, if he would have called push, then uh, then Mika would have the option here to shoot or pass. But he just. Uh and you used to also playing uh, different rules in America as well. Oh, what about this shot? Three rails. Ah, I'm surprised he did, did that. How did he get that gap? That's impossible. That was a different way to go at it. Yeah. He was trying to make that one. Yeah. Three rails. That was like well, a actually, pro shot. probably he noticed that uh, the one ball was located on so-called natural uh, path of the cue ball, like going go three yeah. rails, and actually it was because he mm -hmm. just uh, got the pocket. <laughs> yeah. Only he didn't guess it right. Yeah, these rules are a little bit different. The one rule that, that I think could catch me off guard is... Uh, the one where if you make a combination on the 10 ball, it's not a winner. You can't win the game like that. You have to respot the 10 and then keep shooting. I like that so rule, honestly. I do like that rule, but I'm not used to playing that rule, and I'm worried that maybe I'll think that I have the game won and make the 10 ball combination and not play position on the next ball. I'm, I'm just I, I want to make sure yeah. I remember that rule. So I don't make that mistake. Yeah, I had that in one, uh, I think, the second match, and I had to really think about it. Um, and I was like, okay, we've got to have some position after this one. So it becomes a little bit more tactical. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Because you, you, I like you, that aspect you, you, sti you still stay at the table uh, if you make it. Yeah. yeah. What I like about uh, this change is that uh, it uh, makes 10-ball uh, even more different uh, from 9-ball, actually. 
Yeah, that that's also why I uh, I like the fact that uh, you know it's it's it becomes less about luck and a little bit more about the tactical skill. That's a that, that's a cold shot game. Uh, yeah. First of all, then uh, you you have to pocket the money ball uh, as a last ball of the rack, and uh, last w w which I like is a cold shot, cold save rule actually. Mm -hmm. What yeah. do you think of this sh this shot with Ralph? You think he's gonna cut it in the right corner or the left corner? It looks like he could do either one. Uh, I he he doesn't look. He doesn't really. Um, oh, he is going to go for that one. I thought he was going to take the other one. Yeah, and then spin Inside? up. Inside. I think he's going to go left? between the six seven, for the side. Oh, straight over. Well he even nice. managed to overcut it a little bit. Yeah. Probably uh, the the ball was thrown due to left English. That was a good bit. shot. Okay, so if he can, I think he can see enough of the cue ball where it's comfortable to shoot it. I know I worry about this because. The ten's covering up the right half of the cue ball, so if you use a level stroke and you follow through, like say your shaft is uh, 12 millimeters, as you follow through, it goes up to about 15 or 18 millimeters. Yeah. So you got to watch out; you don't hit the ten. That would yeah, be you foul. Yeah, you have to jab at it a little bit. Yeah, you got to watch out with that. Almost, I, I almost sh would rather shoot that with high English and have my cue. Yeah, you sure. Go up in the air to where it gets away from the ball, and keep it an open breach for this reason, right? Yeah, I don't I've think I've seen a lot of people foul on that shot. It's true, but isn't the predator shafts that he plays with almost like straight until a certain point in the middle of the shaft where they start to curve? I haven't looked at his shaft, but I know. Uh, uh, are you sure that Ralph uh, uses predator shafts? He because does. The shaft is predator. Yeah, because, but because uh, the butt is universal. Yeah, yeah. The, it's a predator mm. shaft. I was thinking uh, the shaft is also universal cue. I'm not sure what he plays with, but uh, I all I know is he it. usually plays pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we need to know. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, what's uh, what is uh, your piece of equipment uh, nowadays? I'm because you were switching Mucci. recently. Muchi, I've been playing with Muchi for a year and a half, mm -hmm. and uh, I like it. I have it. Uh, I have the Muchi Pro shaft, and uh, my cue is a little bit heavier. So, uh, but yeah, I like my cue. It's good. Like about 20 ounces or? 21. Mm -hmm. Wow, 21. that's I've heavy. always played a 21, yeah. If you're used to it, obviously, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's, uh, that's it's why I think I like the pyramid cues, because the pyramid cues, how heavy are they? 23 or something? I, even more. I heard 27 from one 27? guy. 27? That is insane. Wow. That's yeah. almost like a kilo, like 800 grams. And they're so something. thin. That's what's so amazing. You'd think a 27 ounce cue. I'm looking at the guy's cue over there, and they're beautiful. They're made out of ebony, and I they really look like, like snooker cues in some ways, actually. The yeah, the, they the are kind similar, of veneer yeah. and the splicing looks a little bit like it. But yeah, 27 ounce, that's too much for me. I'm good with 18.9 or 7, I think. Well, due to technologies, uh, Russian uh, pyramid cues uh, can be very fancy and like uh, actually that's a kind of technology, uh, so-called uh, full spliced butterfly uh, yeah. spliced cues. Yeah, a lot of nice uh, it, it, it was used like maybe by American cue makers uh, in, in last century, hmm. but since then uh, they all, almost all everybody uh, just uh, switched to CNC. Nearly got kicked in a corner, but... Did he make a ball? No. No. It's dry. Nothing. But at least he didn't leave Ralph a shot. See, this is what I yeah. mean by the break being so important. Yeah. Now, he could have broke, and the one could be laying over the pocket. Game yeah. over. But since he broke and left a uh, not-so-easy shot, he's still in the game. Yeah. You know, these, these things are, are so important in 10-ball, and, and a few turnovers, different breaks. If, you, if your break's not working, or one day you're getting lucky, and the next day you're not getting lucky, it's a... Uh, Luck has a big part of it, and you know, I, I I know a lot of people that say don't don't moan about the the luck or the not luck, but you gotta face it that there is a big part of it, you know. Yeah, it there's luck if it. you're trying to get lucky. Yeah, you know? true. If, and uh, like if you if you're playing to win, often you get the few rolls a little bit more yeah. because if you're trying to avoid losing in the playing style, usually you don't get any rolls. So yeah, it's funny because. I don't really think about luck much in pool mm. because I, I most of the time I know what's going on or what's about to happen. Yeah. But I was playing pyramid, and I lucked in like three balls out of nowhere, and the pockets are way harder. 
you know. So I was like, it I, just only seems like that. <laughs> no, but the thing is, is, is you the player that gets lucky is the player that doesn't know what he's doing. Really, right? I didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> so that allowed me to get lucky. If I knew exactly well, what I was the doing, way the way the way I view it is like uh, <laughs> when the ball rolls, uh, the table has six pockets, and uh, as long as the ball rolls, uh, it yeah. can it can find any of the pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Any of them. I found it funny that I got lucky in that I, game. Uh, I think it was, uh, I'm sure it was Jason Shaw, maybe, right? After the Kuwait Open, who said that uh, the game is like 60% uh, mental, 30% technical, and 10% luck. And uh, okay. I tend to agree with him. Yeah. So l luck I would is have to say the mental part is even more. Luck is an yeah. important factor of the game, actually. Yeah. And uh, uh, one day you get bad rolls, one g one uh, day you get good rolls. So uh, on the long run, uh, luck just evens out, actually. It might be different in snooker, but I have to do... I don't want to do a comparison, but I have to say that... Look at a player like Mark Selby. How often he plays his D game. Not even like B or C, but D or E game. And still wins a match. Like not making 40 or 50, stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. What a shot, though. That was a great shot. And he's going to play another one. <laughs> yeah, if he banks this one, I'm... Uh yeah, I don't think he's going to bank. Nah. He, he, he might try and bank it cross-side and play safe. You know, it's a two-way shot, yeah. If he, he can bring the cue ball kind of two rails towards the ten, and uh, if he makes it inside, he'll have a shot in the corner on the three. And if he misses it, uh, there's a lot of cover. You know, yeah, there's like three or four balls he can hide it behind. Yeah. But I agree with you on the uh, on the snooker. It's yeah. the, a player's able to play the D game and still win because and he's it's the only such one that a does mental it. game. It's yeah. You really have to know what you're doing. You can't yeah. just uh, you can't just go up there and, and hope to get lucky and win a snooker match. It's not yeah. going to happen. It's a very long, very long matches. Mm. And oh, that's the thing I like about the pyramid too is they're playing. Uh, some of the matches are four hours. Yeah. You know the pool. When you get these safeties. Here, yeah, the pool here. We're playing a race to eight. It might be a one and a half hour, two hour match. True. Uh, I think all the great sports in the world always play for four hours. You know, I always always like longer races. So. You mean all sports in general? Or just I mean, the big, the big sports, you know, yeah. if you're, you go play a round of golf, it's four hours. Tennis? You go, yeah, usually it's all always about four hours, yeah. I think. Men's five-sitters. Yeah, so. I'm Has always lobbying for longer races, race to 15 and pull, oh, you know. definitely, something. but people here won't, won't be able to wait that long. It's a pretty good hit. Is he going to get lucky? And Torsten There's just Torsten. hey, Torsten, you should be rooting for your guy. Don't look at your phone. He's listening to this music. Well, there's the same kind of approach uh, we've seen uh, yesterday mm -hmm. by David Alke uh, in the start of his match uh, when uh, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz was playing uh, Vitali Pavluhin, I think it was. Yes. Mm. So he he wasn't paying attention, but uh, later in the game uh, he just was uh, all eyes on the game. So I yeah. think Torsten is going to do the same. Mm -hmm. He nearly overcut that actually. But he's pretty decent on a three, unless he's completely straight. Yeah, I mean, if he has the angle, he could follow out, or he could always just stop it there because he's already have position on the four. Which one is the four? Yeah, that's the, the four, four, right? Four, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the key is to be be able to get on the five because the six is in a tricky situ tricky place. Yeah. So he's looking right yeah. where he needs to be, so he can just kind of draw the cue ball up to the middle of the table and mm -hmm. get a good shot on the six. If the nine wasn't there, would you play a uh, position uh, for the six to play it uh, past the side uh, pocket? Probably not, because see how close the seven is to the rail? It just gives you a really small window to get in. Yeah. You only have maybe three, four inches to put the cue ball. So if the nine wasn't there, I would play for the bigger, bigger area past the side, I think. That's a pretty good shot. He still yeah, has an angle. Yep. Yeah. Do you yeah, think maybe perfect. now try and maybe force it with uh, a little bit low center and then right hand spin to float it over? Yeah, just draw yes, up. Yes, like that. There you go. Good shot there. Uh, a little bit more. That was yeah. perfect speed. Yeah, probably now going to use two, r two rails. Proposition. And yeah. so he sent the cue ball towards the nine. So if he would have hit it too hard, he would have ran into the nine and still been okay. Yeah. And it, with the spin, he's going to yeah. make sure he gets another shot again. So well, he hit that with a little bit too much. Uh, Whoa. Too much, English. too much, too much follow, maybe. Yeah. Le or or the or the table was just a little bit uh, 
drier and it slid a little low on him. He didn't expect the table to play like that. No, he probably needed a little bit of right hand spin, just half a tip or something. Yeah, so this one you have a decision. You can, I think it's a very thin cut or a bank. He's thinning. He's going to cut it. He's yeah, good okay. at cutting the balls. Good shot. Oh, beautiful shot. Ah, but speed is a little bit hard again. You yeah. see the, the speed is catching him off guard. So this one, this one, I'm just going to roll this in with high and play underneath of the nine. Because it's just a, so much easier of a shot to pocket. Center ball. I think so. That's what I would yeah. do. But maybe he'll come above. No. Comes easier, yeah. Yeah. Below. Good shot. Off the cushion. Perfect. Actually, I say perfect, uh, but it rolled a little bit more. So he has to shoot it harder to avoid being on the cushion. Well, one thing uh, we see for sure that uh, top players uh, use the same approach yeah. <laughs> of playing position. <laughs> yeah. And that's a part uh, that uh, just like uh, distinguishes them from us <laughs> humans. That's, <laughs> the, that's the whole key to this game. No. Oh, he missed the nine. Wow. You know, I think he just jumped up a little bit, lifted his head up on that, looked like. That's unbelievable. Yeah. I missed I missed the ten ball exactly like that yesterday because I was too yeah. close to the cushion because I just felt that, you know did he could he could he have put unwanted side on that to miss it? A little bit maybe? Hmm. Oh, he almost scratched. Ralph almost scratched wow. on that. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Well, that's the that's the key. Yeah. Well, that was un uncharacteristic mistake there from mm. Mika. But there's still a lot of play in the match, you know. You just you just shrug that one off and oh well. Yeah. Just have to forget to about it. Game. But both seem reasonably calm right now, so it's yeah. it's it's only one rack, so. Well, but probably it is still like a different stage of calm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but he's he's not in panic mode, not yet. Anyways. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. He was almost a little bit panic mode yesterday, but he seems a bit more relaxed. Oh, here uh, they have uh, still a long way to go. Oh yeah. But yeah, yesterday almost in the first three four racks, I s I felt he was a little bit tentative as well, so. Yeah, I made a couple mistakes in the first couple match, couple racks mm. against uh, Sanchez, and uh, I still came back and was ahead six to three. But well, you managed to win uh, five uh, racks in a row, actually. Oh, okay. But after that, uh, a little bit like seemed to lose control of the game of the match. Yeah, I think if I looked back at most of those games, I could have won almost every one of them. I think he broke and ran a few on me that I wouldn't have had a chance to win, but I had shots. Long follow through on that one, but softer. Oh, well, he scratched. Well, you know, uh, I was browsing through uh, photos from uh, this event yesterday, and uh, there is uh, one uh, by. Uh, of of Ralph uh, breaking and uh, actually on his follow through uh, the joint goes uh, right through the loop of the bridge. Yep. Yeah. So oh, wow. th 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 his follow through on the break is uh, so long. <laughs> wow. His tip is almost at the center of the table, like the blue spot on a snooker table. So that's how much he follows through. Huh. That's interesting. Quite far. I would think it would be really hard to have have. Uh, extremely good control like that it seems like yeah shoulder drop I, I do it myself uh, and I'm one of the few people that break with uh, an open bridge actually um, I can't tell you why but I just keep scratching or shooting the cue ball over the table if I close the bridge so huh. all the players are different yeah, I saw somebody else break an open bridge oh you know who I think Jason Shaw was breaking with an open bridge in the US Open was Nine he? Nine ball and he was doing a cut break, but he was doing open bridge. And he was doing wow. good with it. It was working. I can't do that so in maybe that's ball. Maybe that's the key. Oh, power stroke. That's yeah. pretty decent if he doesn't snooker himself. That cue ball just nope. didn't take off. He hit it with so much high that after it hit the first rail, it still had high spin on yeah, it. It skidded. slowed down is what happened. Or not skid it, he slide wasn't, it. Yeah, he wasn't used to, used to the brand new cloth. Well, actually, uh, one uh, thing I found... Wait, uh, it's not done. It's not it's done. It's still going. Wow. That's a good hit. <laughs> That's a good hit. 
Uh, one thing I found uh, particularly about myself uh, playing, uh, I, fi I find myself in trouble playing uh, uh, like uh, on the table, uh, on the tables like uh, the TV table, uh, is that uh, side spin uh, doesn't grab uh, as good as uh, one is used to from the rails actually from the cushions because of the new cloth and uh, you can uh, just play the inside English and it doesn't grab at all. It the depends, on the, the, it depends the, the on the angle. The ball but just rebounds like uh, if there was no English at all. Yeah. It just kind of slides yeah. off the cushion. And that's yeah. what you see at the Moscone Cup with yeah. the TV lights there and the heat on the table. It's yeah, yeah, sure. You see some of the players just, you know, using a lot of English and it just comes out almost dead. Well, what it, I what it really comes down to is the friction between yeah. the ball and the cloth. And if yeah. the ball is dirty, yeah. it's going to be more like sandpaper on the outside. Yeah. And if it's polished very and smooth, yeah. then that spin just keeps spinning and it doesn't yeah. come off the ball. It stays spinning. Yeah. And the cloth, uh, when it's new, it's very smooth. Mm. It's it, it doesn't have any chalk in it. If you leave the cloth on for, say, a year after yeah. the players play and chalk over the table, it'll have a, a layer of, of chalk on underneath yeah, it. Yeah. And that just creates friction. Yeah. So the top players, uh, they know all about this and they can yeah. feel changes in the table. And it's... Uh, but yeah, it it, so it seems like in Moscone Cup, you yourself have obviously been there a lot. So it seems that it's extreme sometimes how much spin you can put on, and 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 it just doesn't grip because the they they keep the conditions pretty good there, don't they? Yeah, it's the it's the temperature too. Yeah. When when they keep the table warm, yeah. Some of the snooker tables are heated. They heat the table. Yeah. And then the lights from the TV usually keep the table pretty warm, mm. and all that does is that takes all the moisture out of the table. Well, actually, in snooker, uh, if you uh, if it is a professional table, it is supposed uh, to be heated actually, and they yeah. can adjust the temperature yeah. according to the conditions. Yeah, and the they Chinese pool it. table also. They have the Chinese pool tables. Uh, they're they're heated also, so. Uh, how do you like the game, by the way? Uh, I mean the Chinese eight ball because yes. you played it several times. Yeah, the Chinese pool is a uh, it's a it's a great game. It's very very difficult, uh, and I enjoy playing eight ball anyway. In America, I've done well in a lot of the eight ball tournaments. Uh, played the IPT, finished tenth in the IPT, and and uh, so I'll I'll be I'm going to be playing in the star event. And uh, I've played in the Joy event before, so they have uh, they have some good tournaments in China. I'm, I'm looking forward to go back and play again. Snooker pockets and uh, obviously adjusted cushion height for pool balls, and uh, in general, just really a snooker table with a snooker cloth and yeah, actually, uh, an uh, balls. I've been told just yesterday that uh, this game uh, was invented by mistake. <laughs> oh really? They 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 mistakenly uh, mixed uh, the uh, like two kinds of equipment. Uh, you, you they they took yeah. uh, pool balls uh, and uh, by occasion they decided to put uh, them on yeah, snooker yeah. table. They're probably <laughs> like, wait a minute, this is kind of <laughs> cool. Like pool with a tougher pocket cut. So let's, let's when when, the when they table. discovered this uh, mistake, it was a little bit uh, too late. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> to, to change anything. So. So it's two apiece. Okay, so Keeps Mika control changed design. the break there. He didn't draw the cue ball. This time he yeah. he hit the uh, stop the cue ball. I like that break. That's that's good. I think if he sticks with that, yeah. he'll be fine. Look, the one's right in the corner. Now this is yeah. this is the break uh, that can start changing the match. Yeah. Hmm. Doesn't look totally happy with that. Did did he get a bad contact? Because I thought he played that with full topspin. A little bit maybe. Oh, that that's a nice that's good recovery. There. Good he recovery. He got that cue ball to stop really really nice off the seven. He's good at those kind of caroms. Yeah. So the key's going to be getting good on the six ball, I think. You know, he's not going to do much with this. He's just going to make sure that he can see the five. Yeah. Maybe. Bring the cue ball into the left rail. Yeah. About where the cue ball is now, or just near the side pocket, I think would be good. Yeah, he just wants to avoid that snow. Yeah, it came all the way down. That was good. That's pretty decent. Yeah, it got a little better on it. In fact, I like the pattern better because if you're shooting the long shot, sometimes it slides when you get on that short rail yeah. to get to. This the makes it out a lot easier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. That's okay. pretty decent. Do you think uh, it passes into the center? I think it does. 
but he wanted to get a little closer to it, I know. He might take it in a corner. Well, with these diamond tables, you never know about side pockets. <laughs> yeah. I think they play really good. They uh, they behave exactly like this. Yeah, pocket. sure, but uh, the side pocket is uh, a little bit tougher than like uh, that of dynamic uh, table or even brassic tables. The a little bit, yeah. The shelf, the shelf on the middle pockets here is a bit more difficult. Yeah, the shelf so and, and, the and the pocket cut is different, actually. So there are, there the there are um, it's it's almost uh, the same are, actually. There are some tables uh, where like uh, people would play uh, the, the depending on approach angle uh, they would play uh, the same uh, shot on Brunswick table but they won't uh, on diamond. Mm. Oh, definitely on Brunswick. Well, prob probably Cory Cor Cor knows uh, this uh, for the good. Well, some tables in America they'll they'll tighten them up. They'll put a sh they'll put shims. They'll put little rubber shims in yeah. the pockets to make pockets tighter. And when they do that, nice. You can't do that in the sides because the sides, if you tighten the sides up, it ch totally changes the angle that you can even accept the ball. And sometimes if you shoot too hard in the side, th it, it has no chance to accept the ball. It'll wobble out or sometimes they fly off the table. But I think these diamonds, they have it. They've studied the angles and... and uh, yeah, and I've been, to I've, be been I've been told by Paul Smith uh, that uh, diamond tables uh, use uh, very thin shims. Yeah. In order for for the cushions to play properly, actually, mm -hmm. because uh, he explained that uh, um, sometimes the ball just uh, hits uh, the point of the pocket, of side pocket or yeah. corner pocket, and uh, if uh, it is triple shimmed, uh, the rebound is very very different. Well, the diamond tables have changed over the years. The uh, angle of the corner pocket, um, you'll notice on the on the pyramid table, it's very straight. Yeah. And on a pool table, it's a little bit uh, more open. Actually, uh, on pyramid table, it's uh, even negative. Uh, negative, so yeah. yeah. So that'll help accept the ball. Now, the the diamond table, the angle of the corners, if you take the the two shims, it would be it used to be 143 degrees, and they've tight they've they've now it's one, it 141. Yeah. They made it straighter to 141, and what that does is, when you shoot the ball hard down the rail. The ball go in easier, yeah, at, with yeah. speed. That's exactly the same uh, thing yeah. uh, Paul Smith told us yesterday. Yeah. They also changed the slate. I was told that the shelf was a lot deeper before, like one or two millimeters. Yeah. So yeah. you could have like a snooker situation almost if the ball would wobble. You, you could be actually you could be hooked almost. You, 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 you can be jo uh, yeah. po pocket hooked, uh, table yeah. hooked. For me, I like the tables the way they were before, because mm. it made it a lot. It made it a lot harder when when f diamond tables first came out. They compared the diamond tables to the Brunswick's, and they said these tables are much tougher to play on. And l like uh, I remember Alex Pagalian trying to beat the ten ball ghost, where you had to um, you had to break the balls and then get yeah. ball in hand and run ten balls, and he was getting beat. It was hard for him to beat the ten ball <laughs> ghost, which was a real challenge to run out on mm. those tables. And when they changed that angle, it didn't make it quite as much of a challenge to run out. So I prefer. Well, actually, I prefer more of a challenge. I want more play in the game. I w if I play a race to eight, I want more innings back and forth. And, and but probably it uh, shouldn't know. be like uh, over tightened because I think it was uh, one of the the action report uh, challenge matches uh, where uh, players like uh, Shane and Bonning and uh, I don't remember who his opponent was, maybe Dayton or Julio or maybe even Alex Pagula, and they really struggled, uh, like maybe running even three wrecks there, and uh, it's not a very pleasant, uh, like, uh, yeah, to I watch. For TV, I it's going to be better this way, but... Well, look look over there. There's a table right across over there, yep. and those pockets, believe me, are way tighter than the 143 angle that we used to have on yeah. the diamonds. That table over there and that's a good game. I'm impressed they know. can even pop I balls like that in those I tables. I really like that pyramid game. That's a beautiful game. Uh, come on, guys. Believe me, uh, that's the easiest uh, equipment you can uh, ever find because the pockets are not uh, shimmed at all. The rubber is yeah, soft. Just and yeah. and, yeah. and, know and this is the primary reason for uh, all these power stroking in Russian mm. pyramid because the yeah. player actually tries to make the effective pocket opening bigger. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I talked it's, to it's the opposite in pool because you can't do it here. I had one shot yesterday along the rails. I was like, mm -hmm. this is going to be an even if I'm like quarter of a diamond off the cushion first. Mm -hmm. And it just wobbled and stayed right in there in the pocket because I played it at speed 7 or something like that. Mm -hmm. It just wobbled. Of course, uh, that so equipment uh, like it eliminates uh, cheating the pocket uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> of any kind whatsoever. But yeah, I talked to Evgeny Stalov yeah. about the table. He's got a beautiful table in his pool room. And he said it's like one or two millimeters 
between the ball and the cushion. And he li he likes that. He he's with me. I, he likes tighter equipment. I like tighter equipment too because I want more. Well, you know, some uh, like some uh, Russian uh, pyramid players they go as far as tightening the pocket so much that uh, they have the pictures of a ball really hanging in the jaws. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Wow. Yeah, wow. that's just the the it, like it, 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 it means that uh, the pocket opening is actually a little bit smaller than the ball. Than the ball where they yeah. have to slam but it. Yeah, in but there. but still you can pocket it because uh, the rubber is soft and you just power the ball through. Yeah, yeah. Let's not forget the match. Mika just had a good chance here from uh, Ralph. He played a bad safety shot. Left an opening. Well. Yeah, once again the ten ball is hanging uh, right beha beside the side pocket, but according to a recent changes in the rules, it doesn't matter here. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is tough position on the two. Yeah. That was a good shot. Yeah, center English. I hate those shots because I, I always misjudge them. It's a good shot. Yeah, so for me, I shoot the two and then I shoot the five and I play for the six ball in the corner pocket, I think. Just yeah. so you don't get a weird angle on it. But he's almost straight, isn't he? Yeah, I guess now he can't. So now if he stops it... Almost got to stop it for the six in the side, yeah. You see, yeah, now, now you have probably to Probably go in three rails around. Yeah, yeah, he'd have to go underneath the seven. Yeah. Whereas if he would have played from the two and shot the five and came over for the corner, he wouldn't have to... True. You know, I don't know. That would have just been my play. But I try to avoid the sides. I f for some reason, I just always screw up the positional shot after having been to the center. So... Uh, Wow, he rolled that forward because he wanted to get the, the, an exact perfect angle where he could come around easily yeah. for the seven. As long as he doesn't hit the seven. Well, that's fine. perfect. Yeah. Good angle on the seven. Yeah. So what do you do here? You want to go into the center of the table again because the eight is not really... Or you want to shoot it in the top I wanna right corner? I want to shoot the nine off the ten in the side. Okay. And then just roll it easy and then the ten should just come down yeah. three, four inches and you shoot the ten in the corner. That's what I think I would do. But I mean, whatever he does, does here, like uh, even if he goes wrong, he's got almost like two helping balls if he has to shoot the eight into the side. Mm -hmm. You just place it into that top right corner. I think he fell a little bit straight. He wanted a little more. He wants the angle to get over on that nine in the side, but I think he's got the angle. I think okay, he's got the angle. He does, yeah. Yeah, he does. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. All right, let's move see the if ten? He, let's see if he moves the ten a little bit here. Good I think I would. Yeah, nobody wants to shoot a shot on on like a. Well, probably now he cannot avoid uh, moving the ten. Actually, depends well, on if, if the it's ten goes in the side. He might be able to just miss the ten, roll the nine in the side, and then play the ten in the same side. Oh, he moved, yeah, it. He moved it. Good shot. And a good call by Corey. Yeah. Two game lead. Team Finland. I still predict Hill Hill. Hill Hill. Yeah. yeah let's be hoping for this uh, because uh, we didn't have a Hill Hill uh, here. Yeah, uh, at I know the TV you want to have a Hill Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants a Hill Hill except the two players that oh are out yeah. there playing. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> That's a shame. You're a Spatan. You know what? It looks like, to me... She's racking it. He uh, racked it way too high. Look at this. Why is she you racking know what? it? She's that's... that's she that's I should have looked at that. I, I He might have did no, that. No, but it, it's a me. mistake. I yeah, think he, it's a he mistake. he needs to rack that lower. That's not even the spot where um, he's we should, we should tell them. It's not mm. the right place that they're racking it. Well, me, unfortunately... I don't think we can get into the match. Yes. We probably Corey shouldn't interfere the problem with the match. Is, yeah, yes, Corey, Corey is correct about this one, and unfortunately I don't see any, 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 I don't see any official I don't nearby. I coach a player either. It's the wrong place to direct. Yeah, they're racked a good two inches high. Ah, uh, he, he noticed. See, he's looking at just freezing them. No, but yeah. yeah. He doesn't yeah. see it. He doesn't well, see actually, it. Wrong actually, actually, actually uh, rarely a player pays attention to a correct placement of the head. Because I hit a break, and I, was, uh, and I knew I hit it good. Yeah. And I came up dry, and I was thinking to myself, I was like, I hit that good. Maybe I, maybe they weren't them. frozen. And, but I'll bet he racked them too high. Yeah, they are. Uh, it doesn't matter. He still made a ball, but... But it still has oh to be the one on the spot. Yeah, that one's not on the spot. Um, I, I noticed because 
I almost did it on the other table because yeah. the, the dot that we have to write for was almost worn out. Uh -huh. Draw the string, oh, you know, string a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. so, right, it's a ball up. Yeah. Maybe now if we told him, he would say, nah, it's not a ball. Yeah, just leave it there. Yeah, it's interesting that they have that extra line that goes up a little further. It's okay. But yeah, what do you do in that situation if you sit here and you notice that it's not the correct rack? Like, do you interfere so it changes mid-match or do you just let them do it? I don't know. I think it's maybe the, the player needs to notice. True. Yeah. We could, we could, we could tell the referee, but yeah. they might, they might already be breaking a certain way and not notice, and you might mess their next breakup. Yeah, I I'm think not sure. I'm not sure what the best thing to do there is, yeah. but I, you know what? I think, I think the ref needs to know to rack it on the spot. Yeah, we should we tell the referee? Okay, I actually, the ref I, needs I, to know I, that I've just, I've just made, I've just made a call uh, to the officials. And uh, well, uh, I hope that the spot is uh, actually marked on the uh, right place because uh, this might be the reason. No, the spot is, is on the right place, but they do it with a pen, and then they did the white chalk line after, and the the pen mark is almost gone because I nearly racked on the same spot as she did on one of the tables. Mm. So that's why he she can't see it; it's almost gone. Yeah. Well, but there is supposed to be a little uh, a little cross there. Yeah, I think. but it's it's almost gone. Like. Yeah, there's a cross. You just go into the top of that line and rack them there. Just having a cue ball cleaned. Always good to do that after a few racks, especially a lot of the players that break with uh, the Kamui chalk because sometimes that can leave a little bit of residue after the hard breaks. Good position here, just off straight. Would you stun this or do you, would you want to draw this? I'd send the cue ball towards the 10. Yeah, he oh, maybe like that, yeah. Yeah, he's a stunner a lot of the time. But you don't want to come uh, too close uh, to the tank here. Because no. you risk, risk to shoot the 8 uh, jacked up. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, just kind of the, the line that I would take, I would have mm. did that. I think he's just off straight so he can draw it to the cushion now. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Ralph is not really getting any table time at the moment. Three games up. Five two, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, he seems way more relaxed today, Mika. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's good that he got over that mistake of missing the ten in that second game. Yeah. I think the players should know that no, they change the again. that they change the position of the spot. Yeah. But like if they're too high, the players should know. She's doing it again. But now uh, Mika would have the argument, well, why didn't they say it on my break last yeah. time? Are they going to say it on Yeah, Ralph's true. break, you know? Yeah. 
Well, that was uh, what I actually offered uh, mm. to the organizers. Maybe just uh, leave this match and uh, yeah. try to make the adjustments or like on the next right decision on the next yeah. match. Yeah. Yeah, because if you change it, you're going to yeah. be changing it on one of the players' breaks, and and they'll have less breaks and or more breaks to yeah. finish the match. Okay. But here, now you oh, here, here you have it. Oh yeah. shit! Pardon my French, but now he's going to break and he's going to notice. No, it's Ralph's time. Ralph's turn now, yeah. but if Ralph notices, he can change it. But if he doesn't well, notice... Mika might get a shock his next, next break, actually. Like, what happens, anyways. Yeah. Let's see. I think it's the fairs for both players if you don't say anything. My opinion, yeah. but I'm not the organizer of the event. Well, so it's okay as long as we have uh, the, say, the same record. He just checked. He, he just checked. checked. He, he checked went to, to see if it's on a diamond. Oh, like it is on the diamond now. Yeah. Now it's on yeah. the diamond. Okay. And he went to check it. So he, he he's probably been more aware of it than... Uh, yeah, sure, because I think yeah. the Ralph was the one who was paying probably more attention uh, to the w to the work of the referee here. Yeah. yeah. Because in the first rack, Mika didn't even check. He just went down broke in the very first rack. Well, actually, well, actually, you're supposed uh, the referee to r make the oh, that's job right. That's, uh, but that's too far up. Oh well, no, that's okay. No, it's fine. That's fine. That was fine. And you see, side ball yeah. again. Yeah. Oh. Okay, kudos to Corey <laughs> uh, <laughs> from oh the yeah. organizers. Okay, <laughs> yeah. perfect. Yeah, it's good. It's always good to have a professional here nearby. Ah. Well, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. This is my f first trip to Russia, and I, I think it's uh, is absolutely... Is it? Uh, I, w I was thinking uh, you had one already. No, well, I mean, it's my second entry, because I flew in on the way to Kuwait. Yeah, but yeah, but uh, yeah. I just um, my memory probably doesn't serve me, because I was thinking uh, you uh, it's not your first uh, Kremlin Cup, actually. No, yeah, this is my first Kremlin Cup, but I think, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, I must, I, I must have mis mixed uh, my experience, uh, like meeting you in, uh, in the Philippines and <laughs> in Russia. Oh, okay. <laughs> I seem to remember finding a video on YouTube where you actually play Pyramids. Pyramid? Oh. Did you? Well, I... I played. I think I did play a little bit of pyramid in um, Latvia when I played snooker in Latvia. That could have been why. So maybe that was it. Yeah. Could have been why, yeah. But I remember talking to Corey like maybe some several years ago uh, when he uh, uh, told that he he is waiting for the invitation oh, from the right. organizers of the World Championship. Like in, in that Russian was a cool shot. Beard, yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, he played used, off used the ball. Used the five as a carom. Yeah, that was nice. Sure, sure. <laughs> perfect, perfect. It's thing. a very nice judgment. Yeah. Yeah. Just stop the cue ball. I didn't see that shot. That Me neither. That was neat. I was thinking if he's going to do that straight, he's going to double kiss, but he hit it perfect. Yeah, so Mika's looking to hit r rail first. You know, the, He's going to hit the, the back rail, kind of where he breaks from, and then try and go right in between the three and the side pocket. He's got to have a lot of low right, doesn't he? I think draw is going to help you hit this ball. You, you don't want to really hit the ball with top, I don't think. It'd be Not really sure. tough to hit with top. Oh, oh, what a nice hit. That's a pretty good hit. Does he get away with it? Where's the kibble going? Oh, oh that's okay. <laughs> safe. There. No. No yeah. safety. No Nearly. safety. Nearly. But decent hit. Okay. Uh, G? G. Super. Thanks. Yep, need some refreshments. This looks like a pretty simple rack, this one. There's not really any problems in this one. Well, let's uh, see how Ralph performs here in this rack. He gained the control back due to marvelous safety. Could be a turning point. I mean, he's two, three rails, I'll see that again, three racks behind, but 5-3, it's suddenly game on again. Yeah. Two rails, top spin. A couple of tips of left hand.
pretty good shot. Good angle to get over to seven again. Yeah, he just wants to make sure he gets pretty straight in on the seven. He's yeah. looking at side pocket. He'll, he's looking like he's going to follow up for the side. That's, That's nice. That's yeah, straight. perfect. That's perfect. Straight in. Ralph looks like he's stroking nice. I think he's probably one of the best ones to be in a chair, get a few racks behind, and then come back because he's just so calm. Ooh, oh, that was that, that was that was a little bit dodgy. Hmm. Top spin, left hand side or stun? Nope. Top right. Yeah, he's not happy. He's got to reach this a little bit, yeah. probably Trying using his extension. extension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, Corey, uh, what do you think about the like recent fashion uh, with playing uh, with extension on, like Shane Van Boning does, and uh, I think uh, Jason Shaw uh, in Kuwait was uh, playing in, in the same fashion? I think it's pretty good. Um, they, uh, It's similar. I think this the pyramid cues are longer also. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I mean... Just affects the balance. I think it brings the balance back. Some yeah, that, 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 like that, that was uh, yeah. actually Shane was uh, talking about. Like he uh, loves the feel of the cue better with his extension on. Yeah. Hmm. I tried it a little bit, but honestly, the deflection changes a little bit because you change the complete balance of the cue. So hmm. I hit a little bit too thick with mine when I put it on. So I have to like adjust with that. Well, probably it also depends on the weight of extension because, uh, like, I think yeah, uh, sure. those uh, used by Earl Strickland and uh, Shane and Boning are pretty lightweight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't want they don't want it to affect how the cube plays that much. They want it really light. They just want that extra piece on the back in, in, mm. in case if they want a uh, long shot, they can stretch, so they don't have to use the bridge. So finally, I have a bracket back, official bracket, and uh, I see Cor Cor Corey here waiting well, for either a female player or a player uh, with a vast uh, Russian billiard uh, experience. Oh, ah, okay. Ooh. So which ones are the two? Which ones are the two players that he's waiting for? The names of them? It's Valeria Trushevska and Pavel Mehovov. I don't think uh, it tells anything to our ah, viewers okay. here, but oh, okay. uh, <laughs> still it's okay. <laughs> What was the girl's name again, you say? Valeria Drushevska. Ah. I think I saw her play yesterday. Yes. A bit. Yes. That's a good break. If it Oh, the three ball. Does the three ball just come and ruin it all? Let's see Mika's expression. Looks like he's hooked, I think. Oh, he, he just looked like he thought he had a role. Maybe he's able so hard to tell, isn't it? He believes he's got oh, one. Yeah, he's straight in. Uh, looking up to the sky, so maybe he got lucky. Oh, what oh a so shot he had to kind was. of halfway jump it to get over Looked it, maybe? like he jumped it a little yeah. bit. He hit that with high uh, right English. And he hit uh, two caroms off the other balls. That was a beautiful shot. Safety from here. Send a three maybe down towards uh, that corner where... Uh, yeah, I think if you can just get it you know, past the four, yeah. under the nine, and bring the cue ball out behind the eight, yeah. that would be a good safety f for me. Another way you could do it, you could you could bank the three over, kind of by the ten ball, yeah, and the cue ball behind the eight, and that way, at worst, you're going to leave a combination on the six. He's looking like wanting to hide it behind a four. Okay, that's pretty decent as well. That's really good. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, either a very good jump or 
as we probably know mostly from Ralph, he's a good kicker. He avoids the jump a lot. He's so good at kicking. I think this one's a good good time to jump. I agree, but it's so it's so seldom that you actually see him do it. He's well, contemplating it. it looks if he like. kicks to the right rail mm. and hits the top of the three pretty yeah. full, the three will go down by the five, six, ten. Yeah. And he'll leave a long combination at least. Yeah. Or he might might even hook Mika back, but he could behind the eight. Yeah, I think that's what he's looking at. If he can catch it full ball, be a good shot. I think you can also get the same result jumping. Jump and hit the right yeah. half of the three and bank the three down the same way. And it, uh, you, uh, with the jump shot, you ensure that you're always going to hit the ball, yeah. usually. But it's, it's a guaranteed no foul in this partic particular... It's a guaranteed hit, but yeah. it's hard, a lot harder to control the speed of the jump, I think. But you see, he likes, he likes kicking. Yeah. Did he call that pocket? Probably didn't. He got fortunate, though. Wow! Wow! He got wow, real wow, fortunate. Wow! Wow! What a roll! Jeez. I think, I think Ralph would have been better off jumping that, jumping it, but he got away you with. You say it. that, but look at the position. <laughs> yeah, I think Mika can just thin the three over by the eight yeah. and bring the cue ball behind the nine, ten. Yeah. Okay, I've just been asked uh, where our viewers could uh, ask some questions to Corey. Okay. Since he is here, uh, I right. have no idea, but still. Um, I'm, I I'm really interested to hear <laughs> what some of these questions <laughs> would be. Oh, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> we'll just try to fix that. I'll just check our Facebook page whether the view viewers can ask something there. Okay. Could he hide it behind the nine, maybe? Just go past uh That's what he's trying. He's not had it, though. He's yeah. left a shot for uh, Ralph. Would you try to thin this really thin so you can get the cue ball back there? Because eight ball is going to be like a stopper. For me, I would bank the three towards the five. Okay. And bring the cue ball maybe into the first diamond on the right rail. Yeah. By the upper right corner and yep. then down to the first diamond on the on the end cushion. It's possible, yeah. And then if you can bring the three up by the five, you can hook them behind the eight. That would be my choice. Maybe even call the three in the side in case if you make it. Could do, yeah. Okay, actually, uh, back to the questions. I think uh, this is the proper uh, time to ask uh, because, like, uh, later on the game, uh, the heat might uh, build up and we won't have time. So, okay. uh, basically, this question uh, goes about the Moscone Cup and uh, about uh, the process of uh, preparation, your preparation, the way you usually prepare for these kind of tournaments. Foul. Wow, he tried to hit it thin and missed the ball. Yeah, it's talking about Moscone Cup. Yeah, okay, so. Moscone Cup. How do how would I prepare? Well, we we did uh, with Mark Wilson in uh, uh, St. Louis. He's he's got a nice uh, practice room uh, at the Lindenwood College, and uh, we played uh, for a week there. The team, the whole team, would play together for a week, and uh, we practiced our break and uh, long potting and and a lot of different things. Uh, so we had a good practice there. Uh, can't complain about the preparation, you know. So, uh, yeah, it was very, very good, good conditions, and uh, yeah, we did a lot of breaking. So, it's, break's not, so it's, not, it's not like uh, everybody is on his own, but uh, no, you are more we of a team. Yeah, we were all together practicing there, yeah. and it was nice to you know get you know hang out with the guys, and uh, you know then w we spend pretty much two weeks together. You know, for those Kinda two to weeks, gel. you need yeah. to gel as, yeah, a, yeah. as a team. Yeah, that was nice. Did uh, he try to uh, replicate, you know, the lighting or the feel of the table? So you yeah, we cleaned the balls and 
cloth and everything. And uh, oh, that's good. That's we, right. We actually it. we actually practice the lag quite a bit because uh, it's an important thing. Yeah, I mean it's sad to say, <laughs> you know, it should it should be more about playing the game, but yeah, it was it, with short races. The lag is very important because you know one player might run the match out or the other player, so yeah. it makes the lag more important the shorter the matches are. I have to ask you a question though about the lag. What what is your perception of it when you're a little bit nervous? Do you tend to overhit it or underhit it? Because I I tend to actually underhit it when I'm nervous. I shake so much if I have a oh, okay. you know one of those days. Yeah, I've tried to get a little bit better system for for how I hit it. You know. Mm. Uh, so just uh, yeah, just try and visualize how fast it w I want it to go and yeah. But yeah, I've I've underhit it. I've done both. I've overhit it and underhit it. So yeah, I tried to look at Ralph's way of doing it, and it, it kind of helped a little bit. So I lagged pretty good against uh, uh, Sanchez in, in our match. I, my first one was really close, and then my second yeah, one was the second really one was a perfect, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. say almost <laughs> the same shot twice in a row. It's good. Oh, because you were too straight, or no? We we the tied same? the first one. So you had to try again. So we had yeah. to do another one. Yeah. Oh, that's and perfect. I and Corey the made it. Uh, the, his second attempt was uh, absolutely was perfect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to do it. And uh, what about the like mental side of uh, playing the Moscone Cup? Uh, what about the extra level of responsibility there and pressure? Yeah, there's. I mean, th it's just there's a ton of pressure in the Moscone Cup. Uh, different types of pressure. You know, you have the if you're in America, the crowd's on our side. You know, but if you're in Europe, the European crowd, they can they can badger us pretty good. You know, if we make a mistake, they say "ooh," and mm -hmm. it's it, it's pretty difficult to play. And then you also have the you also have the pressure of of your teammates. You know, what what do you Their your teammates think of you, and and how do they react if you miss a ball? And you know, I think it's important that your teammates just uh, you know, if I'm playing partners with somebody and they make a mistake, I I don't really dwell on it, and um, I know they're great players, and I've played against them for years, and I know, you know, everybody's under pressure, so I don't really uh, make a big deal out of it if they make a mistake, you know. Yeah. So you just kind of have to stick up for your teammates and. Uh, what's your we'll opinion? Uh, your opinion for the coming event? Like, uh, does uh, Team USA uh, have a chance, and uh, how much of it? Uh, I think they do have a chance. Um, obviously, the uh, European team's always strong, and and they're in their home c home court, and there's going to be tons of European fans, so they're going to be under pressure again. But uh, a lot of times, uh, if if the the U.S. team is is viewed as underdogs, they'll have uh, a little more mental freedom because they're not really expected to win. So if they win, they're doing something great. And if they lose, well, everybody thought they were going to lose anyway, you know. So uh, I think the U.S. team has a chance. It depends how, how the European teams plays. They have Jason Shaw's first year. So Jason Shaw could come yeah, out. Yeah, he's actually the only rookie on the team this year. Yeah, but he's one of the strongest players on the team. Now, if he comes out playing great, USA's got... That's going to be tough. tough assignment. But if he say. comes out and doesn't play well or feels the pressure, mm. then the USA maybe has a chance, you know. So, Do you remember your, you know, girl year at the Moscone Cup? My first and, year? Uh, yes. How did, you, how did you feel there? My first year I played really good. I, uh, I was the MVP on the team. I think I won most of my matches. So, yeah, I was super happy with my first year. That was That was great. But I was, you know, I was winning a lot of tournaments then, and I was very confident. So, good old days. Simil similar, similar to Jason, you know. So Jason's winning a lot of tournaments. He's just got second and first. He's got tons of money in the bank, and uh, there's no reason why he would feel nervous. He's, you know, he's has nothing to worry about. So, I would expect him to play well. I think this year it's going to be in uh, Ali Pali, right? Alexander Palace? Yes. Yeah. Alexander. Yeah, I, I heard, I've never played there, but I heard it's huge. It's where it they do massive. the darts. 
as they also have the the snorkel masters there. That's about two thousand people sitting there. Yeah, I think they're gonna be. Uh, they m they're gonna make it bigger this year compared to the masters. I was told so. Could be three, four thousand people easily if if they want to do it that way. Yeah. I just hope that they will drop the Europe. <laughs> sounds yeah. sounds so annoying. I'm 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 a I'm a Danish guy, you know. Yeah. EU, but I hate that yell. It sounds so stupid. Well, what do you do here? Do you play? Do you thin the one on the? If you thin the one on the right side, and it creeps out, you're gonna leave an easy shot in the corner. Yeah, but if you fix it, it could just bounce off the. F is that the five or the three? I think for me, maybe I r try and bank the one up towards the two, just past the side pocket, and go on the four. And that way, if you don't hook them behind the four, you're going to leave a long combo. Yeah. Oh, I just banked it straight up the middle of the Containing table. Containing safety. That's good. Yeah, that's all right. Well, ah, that's good, but you don't really expect to hook hook Ralph there. Ralph's going to be able to see, this, see yeah. the one. It would be pretty tough to hook him. But he's played it a little faster than I thought he would, so he's got a shot here, Ralph. He could shoot at this, or he could play the one thick up by the six, safety behind the ten. Yeah. I think it's a good shot to shoot at. Because if yeah, you miss it, it might come back over. You, you got some yeah. safeties that could happen if you overcut it. They yeah, say, just don't uh, hit it thick. Yeah, hit they it say thin, if anything. Yeah. yeah, like you say, it could be almost behind a four if he thins it. No, safety? No. He oh, shot that it ball skidded. I could see it. That was it, a bad it was a bad contact bad between contact. the cue ball. He hit it well. He hit a nice shot. He probably shot there. hit the angle correctly because I it was so thick that I think he hit perfect. Yeah. He he cut the ball exactly where he needed to cut it, but <sighs> see now Mika's cleaning the cue ball off because Yep. Cue ball must be dirty. Do you think the main reason for ball skidding is just uh, some dust particles? Yeah, they say static electricity, dust particles, chalk between the ball and the. I think it's a little bit of both, but I think it happens more on the on the new cloth because the bottom slips out from underneath the ball. So there's yeah, probably. Uh, but on old cloth, it doesn't seem to happen very often. That's true. That's true. Uh, same thing in snooker. Yeah. That was a bad shot. So, but a uh, decent safety it looks. Mm -hmm. Well, should have cleared up there, but. Hmm. Oh, too hot. It looks like maybe Ralph can hit this ball, Ralph first, but it looks like, I don't know, is he going to kick up up table and try and hit it? Mm, I think kicking up is probably going to be better, but the six is almost in a way for that angle, isn't it? Well, if you think about it, say say you kick up up table and come down and hit the two. The cue ball mm. will go towards the nine or back towards where yeah. we're looking from. If you kick to the bottom rail here where they rake, rack the balls and you mm. hit the two, now the cue ball goes up towards the five, four. Yeah. You know, so if you happen to pocket mm. the two in the corner, you have a shot at the four, right? And there's a little more traffic up there. I think I, I like this decision. Yeah, the looks, Rouse, looks the better option. That's the better option. He made a good, smart option here. Now, if he can get the speed correct. I think that's not square enough. Oh, that's that. Oh, what a hit. Uh, it, it's and he in. made it. What? Nah, come on. They Give him a shot. Lucky. That was a <laughs> beautiful shot. Give him a shot for that. Yeah. Ralph is that was a beautiful uh, example of the uh, players thinking, first of all. <laughs> um, okay, so this shot, I would kick and try and catch the top of the four to send the cue ball towards the nine ball. and uh, Too risky to jump? Well, I didn't even think about that. Oh, yeah, the jump's possible. It's only like a half ball thing, and you have automatic position if you do it. Yeah, and if you hit it the right speed, you either make it in the side or it goes up table. Yeah, you exactly. Might you might even be safe well, after. Well, even if you're not safe, you're going to leave a long, tough shot, and he's yeah. got to bring the cue ball back for the five. I think, yeah, I think yeah. the jump is the best option here. But like you say, Ralph, 
hardly ever thinks of the jump shot. No, it doesn't it's look like, like absolute last resort for him, it seems. It's not even going through his mind right now. No, he's think. just looking he's at He's thinking of my original shot. He's thinking of taking, yeah. catching the top of the four yeah. and sending the, sending the four maybe one rail over by the five and yep. cue ball down behind the nine. Let's see how this goes. Oh, he hit the bottom scratch. of it. Scratch. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's unlucky yeah. twice in a row. Yeah. But also, I think you give it a more more of a chance for a scratch because he probably played it with left hand spin, and it's going to make it curve into I the pocket. I think he wanted to catch the top of that. Yeah. He didn't want to. I'm not sure if he wanted to catch that piece no. of it. Maybe he did. That's good. Got a good angle on a five. Just a little bit of top spin. Just off straight, so he still has an angle to get over from the nine here. Yeah, he is pretty okay here. Routine shots. Bread and butter. Just maybe a little bit of stun here. I'll follow through and a little bit of side. Perfect. Straight on the nine. Stop shot, stop shot. And he's on the hill if he does that. Perfect. Okay, it looks like my prediction of hill is not going to hold. Yeah, but and it uh, seems like uh, me favoring Rausek uh, is not going to happen either. No. Unless he manages to come up with some kind of sort of a great comeback mm. here. We're not doing so well, are we? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to predict, isn't it? Mm. Gotta say he was pretty unfortunate because he made that beautiful kick shot on the yeah. tail and he's snookered after that, so... And scratched with his next shot. Mm. And that's very unfortunate. That's where we can talk a little bit about rolls. In this particular rack, at least. So oh. hopefully Ralph gets uh, his portion of good rolls in his next game. Yeah. I don't see why not. Looks like she's wrecking it on the spot again, so that's good. Or a little bit above, but it's better than before. That's that's for sure. Yeah, Corey, if you happen to play on a table with a worn-out cloth, uh, do you prefer uh, moving the rack uh, a little bit below the spot or above the spot? I always just try and leave it right on the spot. Well, but yeah. sometimes the spot is uh, so worn out, like um, maybe there is uh, some sign of a hole, actually. Like speak oh. speaking about uh, playing on bad equipment. <laughs> oh, you're saying, okay. I, if the head ball always uh, rolls if off. The, if the, it's actually easier to rack the balls. Like if the balls, if the ball, if there's a hole in the spot, it's easier to rack the balls because then you push the, push the rack up a little bit higher and then the one will rock back yeah, yeah. and, s and it'll, it'll freeze really nicely. So usually you have to get go above it if you want to do that. You yeah. pretty much have to put oh, the one right in the hole. But what a break. Three balls down. Mamma mia. Yeah, Mika's got the breakdown now. Yeah. I like he's breaking better now. I didn't like the way he was drawing the ball back to the end. And in, Ku in Kuwait, uh, I've seen uh, so one break uh, by Kopi in I think it was. Uh, he made five on the break. Wow. And, he, and, and got no shot. Because <laughs> four, but we, four, four ball, four, <laughs> four and the five were clustered together. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. Yeah, I found a spot as well where I had like three or four balls, but here it, it alternates on every table, so just gotta make sure you have one ball every time. You know, that's really what matters. Safety on this. I think Shane Van Boney made six or seven on the break. Six or, or seven like in that. ten ball. Something crazy like that, yeah. Well, I think, uh, I, I, think I, rem I remember six, I think. I remember yeah. six. It was some uh, local tournament, yeah. probably. Mm. Not a major one. I seem to remember a nine ball with yes. that yes. I Remember that one? He and missed and seven. And again, he, he, and he didn't g g get a good shot either. Yeah, and he uh, missed the, the first shot after yeah, because yeah. he was so shocked about so it. So probably it's not uh, so good to make uh, too many balls on, balls on the break. <laughs> yeah. I remember I made seven one time in nine ball. Wow. <laughs> yeah. How big were the pockets? So, it tight was a ones? pretty decently tight. Did you run out from uh, there? Gold crown. 
I don't think I did. <laughs> it's amazing. All <laughs> the ones where they make a lot of balls, they hardly. Yeah, ever sure. Because just you're shocked. You're, you're not focusing on the, yeah. the ball. Just after. make just make a ball and get uh, the shot on the next one. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, they used to do break contests where wh whoever they do three breaks and whoever makes the most balls on three breaks. I don't. I don't think they do that anymore. Those were fun. I lost a dinner to a guy because he said, "Dude, I can break in five balls and nine ball, and I'll leave and let you rack the balls." I said, "What's in it for me? Dinner." All right. First one, he just had the longest bridge hand, broke from the rail, hundred miles an hour with a house cue, five balls in, and I lost the dinner <laughs> <laughs> on this very first attempt. You're yep. <laughs> you know what? You're lucky he didn't ask to bet more. Because oh, yeah. you would have bet everything, right? Probably. You're supposed to. Yeah, you had a great bet there. You could have said, I want your cue. I'm like, ha, yeah, Well, in, in all, you in, 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 in all, actually, in all kinds of preposition bets, there's a wise uh, advice that once anyone just comes up uh, to you with a preposition and uh, it uh, sounds uh, as crazy as possible, probably mm -hmm. he can make it. Oh, because yeah. he practiced uh, it. Yeah. So, always say no. It's like a magic trick. It's all... Just try to stay all away. Tricks. Well, all tricks. Uh, you you send him my way. He can he can bet me on oh. that trick if he wants. Danish he player coming to you. Okay, send him my way. I'll <laughs> I'll I'll lose a little money on that one. Five balls. Like was in, this uh, playing ten ball or nine ball? Nine ball. That was a uh, nine ball. Nine ball. One on the spot, yeah. but with a triangle. No magic rack back then. Yeah. So that was pretty impressive, I think. Yeah, send Shit. send him my way. Oh, or just right. tell me where to find him. He'd be a nice guy to play, I think. <laughs> I like guys like that. <laughs> Ralph is fighting for his life here. Going to bring it back to 7-4. Uh, you never know. Well, I can't miss from here. Mm -hmm. If he misses one, it's a skid. That's uh -huh. all it can be. That's all it can be. Well, I mean... Or a mental lips. Ralph could still come back from here. It's yeah, not, for sure he can. You know, Mika just has to miss on his break yeah. twice and that's it true if ralph plays perfect so it's amazing it, e even though you're up seven to three mm. two you're two ma mistakes away from potentially losing yeah and the alternate break actually sometimes you it's so hard to protect the lead sometimes yeah because you suddenly get a you can maybe have a tiniest bit of doubt in your head we had this discussion me and uh, some of the american players yeah. over like you should know, you have winner breaks or alternate break what's better and, and that can say it is fair way to play for for alternate break yeah. because um, you get your portion of breaks first of all. Well, yeah, you're going to get your portion of breaks, but s but they made the argument um, uh, you're not going to run the set out alternate break. Well, yeah. you can't get the set out run, but you can get somebody can run the set out if they run out. If I win the lag and run out on my break every time. Your opponent you never really gets a your chance. Oppo my opponent has zero chance to win. Yes, and, and that's where it and doesn't become no a match. Different. It's, it's no not different. a match then. Yeah, it's no different than winter break. If I ran the first eight in a row, I would still run the match out. So Yeah, uh, that's the point. You you, you uh, just uh, can create an edge uh, by running uh, every wreck you break on. Yeah, for me, I think it's more difficult and less likely to run eight wrecks consecutively in a row than it is to... Um, run the eight racks alternate break because yeah. you get a break in between and it doesn't seem like you're running that many and and uh you know but i think the uh winter break favors the b the better players yeah because it on an average if i took my last hundred yeah. matches and i averaged the amount of times my opponents get to break against me yeah so if I'm playing some weaker players, my average score may be uh, I'm going to win more matches than I lose. So my average score would be, uh, let's say, 9 to 7 yeah. or something, or 9 to 6 or something like that. So my opponents, on average, have broken six times against me. But by choosing a format alternate break, I automatically gi give every opponent I play half the breaks. Mm. So it's kind of like I'm giving up a spot. It really. is. So and it's, uh, I think the it's, form, it's like a former handicap almost. Yeah, I think the top players, if they knew it was good for them, yeah, they would all vote to do winter break because it's in their best interest. True. You know, they're getting, um, they're going to get the majority of the breaks. Yeah. The top players will, but you know, there's a 
we've been playing with the so alternate break format for about 10 years in, in Denmark, I think. Probably since about 2003 or 4, maybe maybe even 12 years. And uh, to be fair, it's always the, the better player that, that seems to win it anyway. So, I mean, we have a guy who over the past 10 years has won 20 Danish championships. So we can't really argue that uh, the alternate break format is failing for, for him anyways. Mm, by the way, did you know that uh, at uh, Euro Tour they tried to implement uh, like a three, three wrecks bre broken by one player, then three by another? Yeah. Just breaking in. I don't know if I would like that format. In bigger portions. I think it's more interesting for the fans if you play winter break because the fans can watch somebody uh, hit a rhythm and break and run five, six racks, and that's that's something. Mm. You know, it's a, it's a like Earl Strickland won a million dollars when he ran 10 racks in America. And it was big news, and it's a, uh, you know, he's world famous because he yeah. he, he did that. He he r achieved he that that feat of running all those racks, and that's a big uh, storyline, and, and the fans can get behind it. But if it's just one rack at a time, I don't think the fans get, get as excited about it. They don't even notice that somebody's ran five in a row. Yeah, that's true. You can't but tell. It's hard to tell. How, how many racks in a row did Mika run right here? Exactly. Nobody knows. Really. Exactly. They're that's just true. watching. Well, the probably it's just a matter of paying attention. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's our nature not to pay attention. It'd be you would pay more attention if somebody sits in the chair six six yeah, racks in a sure. row and, and and oh wow, this is a six pack and you know that doesn't happen anymore like it used to. I thought it was interesting. We all crowded around the table when Earl ran those ten racks for a million dollars. But didn't they cheat him? They didn't actually pay it to him. I heard something about that. No, he ended up getting most of the money, I think. Yeah, because they were arguing that, yeah. you know, combinations and l golden oh. breaks wasn't counting and stuff. You should have seen the combination Earl made for the million dollars. It was a very difficult. Was that the very last Very rack? difficult. Yeah, he knew he had to make this combination on the, on the 10. Or it was the 9, I think. Yeah. And it was distance, you know. Oh. It was, Why wow. would you do that? Ralph, just scratch... The cue ball right in the side like it was a pyramid shot. I'm not sure what happened there. I'm sorry, you don't get a pyramid point for that. That's a bad shot. You know, That's the worst uh, moment to scratch, really. On yeah. the hill for um, yeah. yeah, so it's... Yeah, so let's see if Mika can get the job done here. He's looking at the combination on the seven ball for the three-seven combination. You'd rather not play a combination. I think for me, I take ball in hand, I shoot the two in the corner by the seven, and I follow the cue ball to the end, to the to the rail just above the three, and yeah. then I shoot the three in this pocket where he's about to shoot the two. That's what I would do. I would stay away from this combination. Yeah. Just because it's just... But he trusts it, so... Yeah. But like you say, he's not guaranteed to be good on a three here. Yeah, it's a little difficult to, to control both balls. I think if he s draws the cue ball back slowly, the three will just... Uh, he could stroke it and leave the three on the center of the table and leave the cue ball there and get a shot for the three in the low left. Let's see. No, he's going to cut it. Yeah, he finished fine. That's good. Oh, that's okay. Twice okay. across, just past the nine, maybe? or Yeah, I like that. Well, let's see how English grabs. Yeah, it grabs better. Mm, just don't want to slipper yourself? Yeah, that's fine. Good speed. Stop shot. Stop shot or roll it in and play for the five in the yeah. side over here. A little bit hampered by the nine, but shouldn't be a problem. Good shot. Yeah, perfect. Hit that real nice. So I think if he just stops, he, he can shoot the six in the side and then follow off the cushion and bring the cue ball towards the nine to get nice and close. You like, yeah. like to get nice and close on them. Oh, he wants to shoot either the corner or just cut it in the side, yeah. He probably wanted to have a little bit more angle than that. Well, yeah, or less angle, I should say. Yeah, he fell where where he's got a little bit of a touchy shot in the side, yeah. and he's real straight in the corner, so. Kill it with low right? Yeah, I think I shoot it in the side with a little, little soft draw stroke. Yeah. Trust. Yeah, Yo, that's okay. Yeah, that's it's good. He made sure to let his stroke out. He didn't. He didn't. He yeah, doesn't don't want, like you to don't hit want balls. On it. He doesn't like to hit balls easy. No, he, he wants likes to, to firm everything. Yeah. I'm the same way, actually. I 
when I soft stroke stuff, I, I start to miss shots. Hmm. Perfect on a 10. Beautiful shot. Yeah, that's an out, out game and out. So, Ralph Sukay goes, yes, on the B side of the bracket. He in, uh, makes it through to the next day. No, thanks, thanks, day. thanks a lot, uh, Corey. You, uh, yeah, it's always nice to get inside the top oh player's right. head. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Thank yes, you for having me. Thank you for uh, being here with us, and uh, hopefully that's not the last time. All right. <laughs> and not the last time uh, you visit Moscow to take part in the Kremlin Cup, uh, both yeah. uh, pool and uh, pyramid events. <laughs> yeah, I want to do better in the pyramid next time. <laughs> yeah, just just uh, just come to me. I'll show you some tricks. <laughs> okay, perfect. Come, come a week before yeah. practice a bit on that. Yeah, I would yeah, like to. sure. So, Corey Duell, Daniel Kandy and uh, Mikhail Kablokov with you here. Uh, stay tuned for our next and uh, hopefully last match of the day. I don't know yet uh, which one it is going to be, but stay with us. Thanks for watching. Thank you.